All right, everybody, how you doing today? This is Precalculus 30. We're going to talk uh, from section 11.2 about combinations. Now, you might want to just check out the video if you haven't seen it already, my video on 11.1, which was permutations. We did a lot of work ahead of time on permutations, a lot of the same stuff, but I want to explain the difference between combinations and uh, yeah. w where they're applicable, and also, uh, you know, how how um, we're going to recognize situations that are combinations and permutations and uh, what really mathematically the difference is between the two. Uh, so, I just accidentally erased something there. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at, first of all, uh, just to refresh our memory on permutations because the combination is uh, very much the same as the permutation. Now, if I had four letters, A, B, C, and D, and I wanted to, to take two of them at a time and find out how many definite arrangements where order matters that I could do, and I've got them written out here, so I could do A and B, I could, and then I could flip those around, B, A, that's a separate permutation. Then I could do A and C, and of course C and A, and then A and D and D and A. So we do this again with B, you, f you see B and C is another one, well you could flip those around to have a different permutation, C, B, and then B, D, D, B, and then so on. And so what we have is we have 12 of these, I believe. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We have 12 permutations. So there are a lot of um, applications where permutations are appropriate. For example, uh, you know, I've got four people and I'm picking two to be president and secretary. Well, it does matter who's president and who's secretary, right? That, that, that matters. If A is president and B is secretary, that is a definitely a different arrangement than if B was president and A was secretary. So in that situation, we need to talk about permutations definite order. But there are some, uh, lots of cases where we can just talk about combinations, and I'll explain to you, you probably looked, read this already, but um, combinations are similar to permutations except that order doesn't matter. So you see this little line here? It's a selection of objects without regard to order. So order does not matter at all. Now that would be the case where let's say we have four students and I need to pick two of them to help me out after school to organize the desks and stuff. Well, you know, if I pick A and B, that's the exact same as if I picked B and A, right? It's just two people to help out. So that would be the case where we have, um, you know, combinations. So let's, let's do combinations here. Pretty easy. We have A and B. That's one. We do not have to consider as well the reverse order, okay? So A and B. And then A and C is a different grouping, and A and D, okay? So now I've got A with everybody else. Now I need B with everybody else. Well, B is already win with A here, so we got B, C, and B, D. Make sense? And then finally, the last grouping that's not mentioned anywhere else here is C and D, and that's it. So that's six, okay? So one thing you want to know is that um, there are fewer combinations of the same amount of things that there would be with permutations because order doesn't matter. And if I go back up here to this list up here, um, I don't need this one because that's a reverse order of this one. I don't need this one. I don't need this one. I don't need this one and I don't need this one. And so now you have the six left that I listed. Okay? All right, now the, the question then becomes, you know, what's the formula or how, how are these related? You might just say, you might be thinking, well, there are obviously half as many combinations. That totally makes sense. That's it. You just take the number of permutations and you divide by two, always. Well, I, I did a few more examples here, and of course, it does look like that's the case with this example, where I have three things, let's say the number is one, two, three, and I pick two of them. I have six, and if I have three and I just choose groups of two of them, uh, sorry, six and then three here. So that, that follows, but look over here. Okay, what, did I, what do I do over here? Five pick four is 120, and five choose four is five. So that is certainly not half, and this isn't half as well. So if you think about it, uh, another way to think about it is I am dividing here by two to get three. What am I dividing by here? Well, it looks like I'm dividing by 24 to get five, and here I'm dividing by what? Looks like six. Okay, so then my question becomes, how, how does two relate to you know these um, uh, representations how does 24 relate to something in there and how does 6 relate to something you know in these representations 
Give you a second to think about that. Okay, for some of you that maybe have read ahead, or if, you, if you're pretty quick, you might have thought of this. 2 is actually the same as 2 factorial. You see the R there? 24 is 4 factorial. You don't believe me? 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, times 1 is 24. And 6, of course, again, same, uh, or we did this before, 6 is 3 factorial. So what we're doing is we are taking, are you ready for it? We're taking the number of permutations right here, so focus right here, the number of permutations and pick R and we're dividing by R factorial. That's how we reduce the total number of permutations to make combinations. So you might want to, uh, you might want to just jot this down that NCR looks like, um, you, know, you can write this one down and probably this one here too, NCR is also this because we're going to use this. So it's the same as NPR except we're dividing again by R factorial. Okay, take a second to jot that down. And then there's one other thing I wanted to show you that you want to jot this down as well. So another way to write N choose R, and this is a bit silly, maybe different, I know, you don't see this very often, but you could run into this. So another way to write NCR is uh, these big brackets and then N over top of R. No line for dividing, no nothing. This just means N choose R. Okay, so you might, you might see this once in a while. All right, I'm going to take a few minutes to run through example two with you because um, questions with cases are probably the trickiest uh, for most of my students. So I'm just going to run over this real quick. Now, the question says this. Rihanna is uh, writing a geography exam. The instructions say she must answer a specified number of questions from each section. How many different selections of questions are possible if, here's A, she must answer two of the four questions in part A and three of the five questions in part B. Okay, so we've got two of five, sorry, two of four, so we've got four, and I'm taking two at a time. Now, is this going to be a permutation or combination? Well, if you think about the question, she's writing an exam, does it really matter which one of the two she writes first or she completes first? No, it doesn't. As long as she does any two, the order doesn't matter. So the first part of the exam, part A, is four, choose two. Okay. The second part of the exam is five questions and she needs to choose three of them for part B. See that? So we've got, um, what was that, five, choose three. Now if we've got two sections, remember back to 11.1, .1, we talked about something called the fundamental counting principle. Okay. If you have a certain number of options for decision A and a certain number of options for decision B, you multiply them together to find out how many total options that you get when you combine the two. And so we're going to use fundamental counting principle here as well as our combination formula. And so this is how you uh, tackle the first question there. 4 choose 2 times 5 choose 3. So you do that on your calculator. Okay, I've got the graphing calculator again. It's not that, not that easy to get to all this stuff. Math, i got to go to probability. i got to choose number 3 there. So 4 choose 2 is 6, okay, whoops, let me just, uh, 6 times, what's 5 choose 3, so 5 and CR 3 is 10, hopefully you're doing this along with me in your own calculator, so that's 60 uh, different ways, right, 60 different ways that you could do that, okay, does that sound, uh, does that sound right, 4 choose 2 and 5 choose 3. Okay, 4 choose 2 and 5 choose 3. Okay, so 60. Um, you guys get that? Alright, that's how many different ways uh, she could, uh, that's for A, that's the answer for A. Now what about the, now what, there's a B part, okay, so let's take a look at the B part here. And the B part says this, she must answer two of the four questions in part A and at least four of the five uh, questions in part B. Okay, so this is where we get into the tricky part here when it says at least this many questions. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. I'm going to put that question down here. We're going to continue working. So, again, sh uh, how many different selections are possible if? So, this is the second 
the second part here. She must answer two of the four, okay, so that's going to be four, choose two, and at least four of the five questions in part B. So when you see wording like this, at least four of the five, what that means is she's going to do five, choose four, or five, choose five, because she could do four of them, or she could do all five of them. And so this right here is the tricky part, okay? The cases, everybody freaks out at that. So how do you deal with that? Well, it's actually um, pretty straightforward, okay? So she could do, this is for the first part, and she could do five, choose four for the second part. If we wanna find out how many that is, then we just simply do that. That's gonna be six times five. Five choose four is actually only five different ways we could do that. So we've got 30 choices, okay? So she could do 30 choices, or she could do, what's the other case? So this is or, four choose two, and five choose five. See, that's the second part of the case. So at least four means four or five. This is gonna be six times. Now this is a bit funny if you haven't done this in your calculator yet. Five choose five. You have five items, how many different ways could you choose a single group of five of them. <laughs> well, there's only one way you can do that. That's picking all five at a time. And because it's combination, you know, the order doesn't matter. So actually that is just one. Five choose five is one. So for this case, we have six different options. That's it. So when you see the word or, you're talking about different cases. And then that, if that's the case, then you simply add the the two numbers of possibilities from each case involved. That is, in this question, where you do four of the five questions, and you add that to the part of this case where you do five of all the five questions. See that? So here, for B, there are 36 um, possible ways of choosing either four questions or five questions in part B. All right, I'll just conclude this lesson by just showing you a summary of what we've learned here. The key ideas. A selection of objects in which order is not important is a combination. Two, when determining the number of possibilities in a situation, if order matters, it is a permutation. If order doesn't matter, it's a combination. And here is the formula for NCR. The number of combinations of N objects taken R at a time can be represented by this. All right. Now, I am going to actually go back to the textbook here if you had a chance to read that. And actually, maybe what I will do is I will, whoops, I will take a look at, you know, you know, maybe some, just some answers to these questions. So, decide whether each of the following is a combination or permutation problem. Okay, briefly describe why. So, something like this, um, traditional Aboriginal welcome circle, each member shakes hands with each other member twice. If there are eight people in a welcome circle, how many handshakes occur? Okay, you don't have to solve it. But is this a permutation question or is this a combination? So I'm shaking someone's hand. Is that a completely different case than that other person shaking my hand? The answer is no. So order doesn't matter if I am shaking someone's hand or if they're shaking my hand. It's the same event. So combination does not matter. Uh, what about C? A car dealer has 15 mid-sized cars. In how many ways can a rental agency purchase 10 of the cars? Okay. Does the rental agency uh, really care about the order in which they're listed on the invoice? No. They just want 10 of 15. The order in which they are delivered or the order in which they're entered in the computer or purchased makes no difference at all. Combination. Got it? Finally, D. A hockey team has 18 players. Yeah, hockey. In how many ways can the driver select six of the players to ride in the team van? Okay, again, does it matter where they sit? Well, hockey players, yeah, it does matter where they sit. But in this question, if we're selecting six of them, does it matter? Now, you may say, yes, it matters because so-and-so wants to sit up front and the other guys, this guy wants to sit in the back. So you may argue and say, yes, it totally does matter. It's a permutation. Some of you may say, well, you know what? It's just six people going in a van. doesn't matter the order in which they get in or where they sit. It doesn't matter. It's just six of 18. It's a combination. So there is a little bit of leeway here for you to explain your position, I think. It, it, for me, you know, if you're in my class, certainly if you can think it through that way and present both those options, I would, you know, take that. Okay, so, yeah, here's some questions there too. If you're watching this on YouTube and you don't have a textbook, 
you can just pause these parts. I'm just going to kind of fly through the, the, uh, the text here. Okay, so it's questions 1 to 13. Okay, I think I am going to um, assign to you number 18 uh, as well here. So you want to take a close look at this one. How many ways can you select five cards from a deck of cards? Um, doesn't order doesn't seem to matter. And how many ways can you select five cards if three of them are hearts? Okay, so now you have some restrictions there. So you're going to have to figure out how you're going to solve this. Three of them are hearts. Does it matter if it's the first three you select or the last three? Mm -hmm. You might want to consider that if that's an issue. Um, you know, so I'm going to let you work through that. But yeah, 18 is something one I'll give you for your assignment. All right. Uh, hope this lesson helped you, and uh, I'll show the uh, show the, the uh, sample questions here that you can do if you're in my class here. All right. So here's your assignment if you're in um, if you're in my class here, PC 30, uh, 11.2. You can do those questions to work on, and yeah, like I say, just back up the video and uh, pause at the appropriate spot if you don't have your textbook with you. All right. Have a good day. Hope you uh, hope you understand this stuff.